Do I love Jeffrey Buzz? Where is all this coming from? What did Jeffrey say to you? A lot. Stop avoiding the issue. I'm not avoiding anything. Well, then answer me. Are you in love with this man or not? It's a simple enough question. You know, nothing with you is ever simple. I can get to the bottom of this anyway, believe me. I have told you the truth about your son. What more could you possibly want? The truth about Jeffrey is what I'd like. I mean, you've you led me to believe that the guy was nothing but trouble. You've hinted that he was dangerous. That's right. So? But that's not the way you were treating him just now. That man walked out of here confident in the fact that he had something more with you than a business arrangement. So tell me the truth. What is it with you two? Is it just business? No. Light and shadow. These are the key elements when photographing the landscape of the human form. What the hell? Oh, man. This is She's what beautiful. I'd like you all to focus on as you make a careful study of today's model, the female nude. Okay, hey guys, we got your diapers and your wipes. Jason's passy. Kevin, you need something for your gums, don't you? Okay, let's hope that this is Daddy. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Rick. Well, it's nice to see you That's too. Okay, come and come and come in. Come in. Well, we need to go. It's getting late. I know. I'm getting, getting everything late. together here. You know, these twins don't travel lightly. This is sometimes it's almost impossible to get out of here, especially. It's just one person. Hey, you seem to be got down pat. Well, Mrs. Murphy's got me beat by 15 seconds. Who's uh, Mrs. Murphy? She's um, she's a woman I, I met online in one of those multiple birth chat rooms. Right. You know, she's a proud parent of quintuplets. You'd have to put me in a funny farm. Whew. Well, she's kind of my role model. She's a single mom. Yeah. Well, oh, no, I'm, I'm sterilizing some bottles. So you'd uh, l look after the boys while I get them, okay? Sure, I'd love to. Uh. Hey, Kevin, how you doing, buddy? Oh, geez, what's wrong, buddy? You got some gas? Here, come to you. There you go. Oh, there you go. You got a little. You got some gas? You need a burp? Ross, I'm supposed to take Blake and the twins to the pediatrician. What are you doing here? No, Blake didn't tell me you were coming over either. What are you doing with my son? Blake had to check on something in the kitchen. Really? So what? So Jason had a gas pain. I had to burp him. Well, why don't you give it to me? Look, uh, there's a blanket around Kevin's foot. Could you get that for me? There you go, fella. All right. Hey. Oh, come on, Daddy. Oh, what a big boy. What a big boy. Uh, Ross, circuit motions seem to work really good with him. I think I can handle this. Fine. Just trying to help. Seems to be your motto. I read up on these DPT shots that the kids are going to get, and uh, I understand that there's a minimal risk of severe side effects, and I'm having second thoughts. About immunizing them? Well, yeah, for some people, the cure is worse than the disease. Well, if we're talking about statistics, it makes much more sense to immunize the kids than not to. I mean, side effects are rare. They can be severe, though. But I, I'm just saying, I, I, I just think it's better for the kids to get the shots not to get the shots. Well, I don't think you should say that, doctor, unless you read up on the latest stuff. Kevin is much more susceptible for infections because of his splenectomy. Yeah, well, I thought that we were giving him penicillin on a daily basis to come I think it's that. just best to talk to the doctor about it, Ross, if you don't feel comfortable with it. Yeah, I got the formula in, um, Ross, I didn't hear you come in. Wouldn't it have been nice to tell me that Rick was going to be here? Do you think I like these kind of surprises? Well, I thought that it was more important to include both you and Rick in on this. I think we should be going. 
That is Ross, if you still feel like coming. Yes, I do. As I adjust the model's position, notice the relationship between skin tone and light. Now I'm going to shift the head a little, raise her arm on this side. Now that will be our first pose. I need uh, a light meter reading. Any volunteers? Jay, how about you? What? The incident light meter. We're shooting ASA 64. We need an aperture setting. Mr. Chamberlain, sometime today would be nice. Sorry. Now, closer, much closer than that. A couple of inches from the face in order to get an accurate reading. With skin tone, there is little room for error. The first series of uh, pictures we're taking today is about skin tone. What the hell are you doing here, Michelle? None of your business, Jane. Camera Michelle. is your tool. Use it to it's reveal. 15 and 30 bucks an hour. The model. I didn't know you were in this place. Everyone sees her in their own way. Make us see what you see the crook of her neck, her arm, her knee. So, what did you come up with? F stop of 1.4. You heard him, class. Start shooting. Uh, Jay, that hits you too. You're a photographer, not the subject. Okay, good work. For the next series of uh, pictures, I'd like to focus on a different area of the body. Now, could you take your robe and put it off your shoulders, please? I think I just got a glimpse of what you must have been like at eight. Um, I was pretty cute. Yes, you were. Do you still see me as a kid? No, not in the least. Doesn't it bother you that we haven't slept together? <laughs> whoa, whoa. Where's all this coming from? So... I don't know. I was just thinking. Actually, what happened with Michelle at a party got me to thinking. You must think I'm pretty immature. I mean, you've been all over the world. You've been with lots of women who weren't virgins. No, I, mean, I guess they weren't, but... Now you're making me out to be some kind of world-class heartbreaker, and that's not how it was. Well, still, I mean, it's, it's got to be weird for you. I mean, it's got to be weird waiting for me. What's going on here? I was just wondering. You know, I was just wondering. I mean, you never try to talk me into bed. I just... So don't you want me? Don't I want you? Oh, yeah. I want you so bad sometimes, I feel like I can't even breathe. Let me tell you something, okay? When you walk into a room and I see you searching for someone, I have to turn around and look around because I can't believe that, that you're looking for me. And when you spot me and you're coming over to me, I am pinching myself because it's like I'm dreaming. I wonder what is an angel like that doing with me? And what if she wakes up and realizes that I don't deserve her? Thinking. Look, I may have had more experience than you, but none of it matters. This is like a first for me, too. A first? I don't get Look, it. I mean, you've been Yeah, around. I'm a jazz man, and I've played in all kinds of rooms across the world, like you said. And Look, sometimes it gets smoky, and it gets late, and it gets lonely. And sometimes when a nice lady wants to offer you company and a nice crib and conversation for a change, you take it. But it has nothing to do with love. 
he wanted to know how I feel about you, if I want you. I want you so bad, I don't even know how to put it into words. Okay, I am a jazz man, I am a musician, I'm not a poet. But Dahlia, I want to make love to you. And I want it to be as perfect as an imperfect guy like me can make it for you. But when it happens, and it will happen, it'll happen if someone up there is listening to my prayers. When it happens, it's gonna be like the first time for me too. I've never been in love before. Jeffrey and I mean more to each other than just business partners. Well, the story changes. Yet again. Buzz, I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm going to tell you so that I can explain it. When I met Jeffrey, we were both very lonely. It was probably well, the lowest point the in line. my life. No, if you, don't you know, you asked me for the truth. I don't and need the details. Need I can fill in the blanks. No, you... what does that mean? I've seen this kind of thing before. Now, don't you take this condescending tone with me. Well, you haven't got the foggiest idea what my relationship is like with Jeffrey. Hell, I don't. No, you don't. You haven't given me two minutes to explain it well, to you. There's nothing to explain. Come on. I mean, you have a typical run-of-the-mill love-hate relationship here. A little edge to it, a little danger. I mean, we've all been through that, you know? I mean, the kind of, the kind of high drama you two are having right now, we've all enjoyed, but just most of us outgrow it. Buzz, would you please listen to You don't have to, to apologize. Me? You don't have to apologize. I was not about to apologize. I, mean, I should have seen it coming. I mean, I went through the same thing with Reva. There I was, you know, with this sort of, you know, unhealthy relationship. You know, control, manipulation, obsession, and that kind of thing. What? Control? You think I'm obsessed with Jack? Lady, call it whatever you want. But for my own part, I accept responsibility for it. I should never let myself get dragged into this thing with you and Jeffrey without knowing the details. But tell me something. It must have been a turn on, huh? What are you talking about? Well, I mean, when you, you know, when you stole Coop from out under his nose. I mean, they must have really gotten going. You are way, way out no, of line here. Oh, look, oh, play your games. It's fine with me. Really, it is. I mean, you know, you get your kicks any way you want. It doesn't make a difference to me. But, you know, sort of lead me and the kid out of it. Oh, are you... You are so obsessed with the way you feel, your hurt, your loss, your pain. You don't even take an extent. Don't walk away from me at this point. Where are you going? I'm going to take the kid. I'm going to the park. Oh, no, you are not going anywhere. You are not going for a walk alone with Coop. Really? Says who? Me, his mother. I'm his father. Yes, you are, but, but you're a stranger to him at the moment. Well, whose fault is that? That's not the point. Oh, really? Pray tell, what is the point? The point is that you're a stranger to him right now, and I'm afraid that he will be frightened if he's suddenly alone oh, with you. Oh, so my son's afraid of me. No, but... Well, you know, I should think by now that he'd be able to adapt to just about any stranger, seeing as you and Jeffrey foist him on nannies and, and everybody in Europe from the day he was born. That's not fair. That's very, very oh, cruel. Oh, please. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I know your lifestyle. You told me about that part of your marriage. Here you, you blow into some gala. You stash the kid with whatever child care professional you can find. Then you pull the heist, then you move on to your next robbery, right? Don't play dirty. Don't do it. Now, we may not have the best marriage in the world, Jeffrey and I, but we have always no, given no, no, Coop no. everything stop in the world. Stop it, stop it, stop it. What? Stop it. I mean, please, stop trying to make your marriage sound like it's no big deal, like it's a, you know, a little thing that we can just work our way around. You make this sound like I'm ready to just fall back into your arms. And that all I need to do is apologize for having a life while you weren't around. You don't have to apologize for anything. You already said that. Except, perhaps, having our child and not telling me about it. Thank you. That's nice of you to throw that in my face. Yes. Well, it happened just now. I'm still a little raw, you know. As you know me. I thought I did. How could I have lived with a man for almost two years? Allowed him to put his name on my, on, on, on our son's birth certificate if I didn't care.
for him. How do you, how do you think, what do you feel about me? You have lied to me so many times. I don't know what to believe. And to tell you the truth, I'm not sure it's worth the trouble to find out. Dr. Gottlieb will be examining the boys today. Yeah. I haven't met him yet. No, neither have I. Well, wait a minute. I thought Dr. Leahy was the one who checked the boys out of the hospital. One of three doctors in the practice. Well, Dr. Gottlieb is supposed to be very good. I mean, he's treated Meg, so, so okay. Fletcher and Mom that's, that's... really swear by him. Yeah. Oh, uh, hi, Doctor. Hi, Doctor. Hello, Rick. You're both the fathers? Yes, I'm Ross Marler. Good to see you. Uh, doctor, see I have you. a question about uh, Kevin. What is it? What's wrong with Well, Kevin? it's not a very big deal. It's just that he hasn't been sleeping very well lately. He's been very cranky, so... Blank, blank, that's nothing to worry about. He's cutting teeth. Yeah. Those symptoms are perfectly normal, right, Don? Yeah. See? He's got an early one going right here. Well, there's one. Stay sharp inside, Jason. Little guy. Jason. Who's that? Hi. Who's that? All right. They both look great. Let's weigh him. Okay. Doc's gonna weigh you now. Okay. Here you go. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, you like the scale. Yeah. Sit right down. Oh, yes. Right down there. <gasps> Uh -huh. What a good boy. Okay. What a boy. Fifteen and a half. Good boy. Okay. Here we go. Next. Oh, yeah. We're going to sit to you right here. Okay. Fourteen and a half. Okay. A couple of bruisers. No wonder I have such a big arm. biceps, you know? Uh, uh, Dr. Jason's weight gain is, is where it should be, correct? Mm -hmm. Good. Now, for the fun part, they're shots. Now, uh, Doc, um, I did talk to Dr. Leahy about Kevin's splenectomy, and he said it was okay to go ahead and give him the shots. Mm -hmm. Blake, is that okay with you? I, I, I don't know. You know, here I am trying to protect the boys, and then I'm okaying something that's going to hurt them. I, I just... Uh, I, I hate needles. Well, I have a high tolerance for pain, so I'm sure Jason has inherited it. No. Oh, it'll be okay. Oh, Jason, you win. You're the lucky one. I know that feeling. That's all. It's okay. I know that feeling, but I tell you, the spring training is almost over, and I better get going, get those White Sox tickets before all the good seats are taken. Huh? I thought the kids were going to be Cub fans. No. Oh, okay. Oh, what a good, brave boy you are. Oh, it's over? You did it already, You're huh? You're brave oh, man. Good work. Oh, good what job, a Jason. Good work. heart. Yeah, okay. I thought I was going to faint. Oh, you got to hang in. We've got one more to go. Okay, okay, okay. Kev, Doc's going to give you a shot here, okay? The pain's going to last just a second, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you get over it, okay? Sure. I promise. Life's like that, you know? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh. Is he a good boy? My oh, fearless one. one. Yes, my fearless little guy. You are a hero. Good job. A hero you are. Yes, you good are. Good job. Both boys, you're both heroes. Hmm. Yeah. Did it go? Oh, okay. What? Uh, it's a hospital. It's ER. I told them they were short-staffed tonight, and I told them I'd help out in case they had a problem. That's fine. Ah, okay. uh, yes, I'll give you uh, the details, you know. Thank you. I appreciate it. Later. Bye. 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 Doctor, I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for being so good to my son. <laughs> okay. okay. See you later, Ross. It's just frazzled here tonight. Doctors called in sick, three nurses called in sick. We're really shorthanded. Well, don't let me keep you, and if you need any help, let me know. Wait, I just heard that you might be leaving the hospital. Now, is this true? Uh, I'm, I'm cutting down on my hours. Abby, I think I know what this is about. Oh, Lillian. No, no, just let me say my piece, okay? No, but, no. but you don't know... No, 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 I do know. I know very well what it's like to come to this hospital every day and see someone that you were very close to. Even when it didn't work out, it makes it even harder. And I know how hard this is going to be on you. I know you're angry at Rick and you have every right to be, but please don't make a decision that you're going to regret later with your life over some man, please. Lillian. Lillian, thank what? God. 
Oh, we had an accident at the Spalding Warehouse. Four people got hurt. EMS is on the way with the others. This guy's name is Ronald Miller. All right. His leg is messed up. I tried to put a splint on it. I don't know if I did more harm than good. I'm sure you did a fine job. It looks like you passed out. I don't know. He was unloading uh, a, a shipment. He was doing an inventory, and a forklift just went nuts and knocked over a whole shipping wall. Right. He got his leg caught under it. Basal response due to pain, probably. Get IV fluids, 0.9 normal saline. Sure. Get a doctor for me, please, what it, right away. What does that mean? His pupils are equal and reactive. And, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, oh, Abby, please come talk to him, all right? Oh, You're going to be okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mr. Miller? Huh? Sorry, Roger. Just hang in there, man. Mr. Miller? Um, he was doing... He was had a, on, on, to the side of a forklift, okay. and he was on a shipping wall, and the whole thing, it just jumped. Yeah. What have we got? Oh, what God. Got? I didn't know you were going to be here, man. Neither did I. What is it? Lower right fracture of the right leg right there. Okay. Um, he has a strong pulse. He was hurt at the Spalding Warehouse. Yeah, I mean, we literally had to dig this poor guy out from under a bunch of crates. He had a syncopal episode. All right, what's his BP? 90 over 50. Heart rate? 45, 50. Okay. All right, Mr. Milgram, take a look at your leg, okay? All right, we got an open tibia fracture, and we got to bleed. We got to give him some stitches. Give me a okay. suture trace. Yep. Yeah. Excuse me, Philip. Uh -huh. Keep checking his pressure. Fluids? Fluids wide open. Let's do it right now. Okay. He just got caught under the thing. Okay, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's numb him up. Mr. Mr. Miller, you're going to feel a bit of a sting, okay? You're okay, Mr. Miller. Uh, all right. It's okay. Okay? That's good. Okay, now we're going to get this bleeding stopped by giving you a couple stitches. Okay. Give me sutures. It's going to be fine, Ron. You're in very good hands. All right, here. keep checking yeah, his BP. Yeah, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Miss Pressure Stabilizer, give him 60 meperidine okay. IM, okay? Yeah. We need to get him up to, we need to get him up to X-rays right We now. don't have anyone to take him up. That's why you were called uh, in. All the doctors, all the nurses, everyone's right. out. Uh, Abby, we're a little short staffed here. We need your help, okay? Of course. Anything all right, I can go do. ask the desk to get a tech down here from radiology ASAP. We also need to do an orthopedic consult, have him call Dr. Phelps, and we need an orthopedic cart. Can you oh, snag okay. one for me? All right. Um, I'll wheel it around. I'm okay. ready to back. Okay. Oh, yeah. no Thanks, Abby. Feel what made that. Okay. You did a nice job, huh? I know you think it's Joe Lovano, but it's not. It's Joshua. No, 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 no. It's Joe Lovano. It's and Joshua don't try and tell me that I don't even know who my own man is, okay? <laughs> you okay. know what? This isn't even worth arguing about. It just isn't. Besides, I'm right. So no, you know... I know I'm right. Don't go there, because this is a jazz thing. I'm a jazz player. These are two jazz tenor saxophone players. I see how you get them confused. It's don't Joshua worry about Redmond. It. Do you want to make a bet? Put your money oh, yeah, in I will, I'll be willing to bet, but I know I'm not going to lose. I'll tell you what. If you lose, you get to polish my saxophone for a month. Hmm? Uh, Anything else? Oh, yeah. You get to drive me to all my Towers gigs and on the way pick up some uh, Eleni's chocolate cake to feed to me on my breaks. Uh, do we get to talk about what I win if I should happen to You win? can get whatever you like because it's not going to happen. <laughs> you have to chop off all your hair. I, I thought you liked my hair. Oh, no, I love your hair, but if we're going to do this, we better make it count for something, right? Yeah. Why well, you look so nervous? I'm not I mean, nervous. You know you're not going to lose, right? Damn so... straight I'm not going to lose. Oh, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to mosey on over to the record store, you know, and just check some things out, the one that I worked in over Christmas, uh -huh. and just... Do you want to come? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I'll wait for you right here when you find out you're wrong. You can go over to Laney's and pick up some chocolate cake for me, and we can start payback right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Great. Bye. Ooh. Hey, we did it! No, 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 they did it. Those EMTs were wonderful. Oh, but you did such a great job with that chest tube on the uh, pneumo from the trauma site. Thanks. How is uh, Mr. Miller? Any word on him? Yeah, I just talked to Dr. Phelps. He's doing really well. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Hey, Abby. Abby. Some wonderful work. Nice job. Just did what anyone would do under the circumstances. Now, no. Rick is right. You were calm, you were cool, you were collected. You were all the things we want in ER. Really, it was wonderful. Now, um, I want you to reconsider what you and I talked about earlier, okay? Okay. Reconsider what? I just kept back on my hours in the data entry job. Abby, please don't do this. I've hurt you enough already. This doesn't have anything nope. to do with yes, you. Yes, come on. Now, I know how much working here has meant to you. How much has helped you move ahead with your life. Please don't let my mistake cost you this, too. You know, don't flatter yourself. Not every decision I make revolves around you. Now, come on, that's not what I meant at all. You know, I don't need your approval to move ahead with my life. 
I know that. I never said I was quitting or giving up, just the opposite. You're right. Working at this hospital does mean a lot to me, but I have a lot greater ambitions than sitting behind a computer all day. Abby, I'm sure you That's do. That's why I am making some changes. Now, obviously, my personal life is taking a turn that I wasn't expecting, so I think it's a good time for me to make some changes in my professional life, too. Like what? What are you going to do? I'm going to become a PA. A physician's assistant, Abby? I'm, honey, I... I, I just, that's wonderful. Here at Cedars. Well, you know, judging how well you did in ER tonight, I'm sure you're going to be a very good one. If there's any way that I could help you, just let me know. No, thank you, Rick. I won't be needing your help. The boys couldn't be healthier. I'll, uh, I'll see you all next time. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Yes. I guess we should just finish getting them uh, dressed and, and we could get going, huh? Easier said than done with this damn zipper. Oh. Is this a jacket that Barbara gave him? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's too good for her great-grandsons. Yeah. She loves his designer stuff. She overpaid. It's all style and no substance. Well, here, let me help you. If I hold it on the bottom, there you go. There you go. <gasps> I know. It's over. Thanks for coming, Ross. Yeah. I guess I should call a cab. No, you are not going to call a cab. You're not going to wrestle with these two monkeys all by yourself. I'll give you a ride home. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, would you put Jason down? Keep an arm on him. Uh-huh. Got him? Uh-huh. Kevin's the bigger one, the heavier one. So I guess I got him. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, come on. Oh, yes. CBS proudly congratulates the young and the restless for its outstanding achievements. 24 years strong and the number one daytime drama for nine consecutive years. Congratulations to Bill Bell and his winning team. Hold on to the feeling and don't let go. Keep shooting, people. Simply making a few minor adjustments. Okay. That wraps up the second series. Our final assignment of the day calls for a close attention to detail. Your challenge is the same as any artist who chooses to work in this medium. You must endeavor to capture the essence of the female nude. Now, uh, would you take your robe off now, please? Um, are you cold? I could close the window if you like. I'm fine. You sure? With me, like it or not. Uh, um, not. You have no one else to blame but yourself. It's your own damn fault for volunteering to be my watchdog. The judge had to remand you to someone, didn't he? You just happened to be standing there. As usual. Yes, as usual. Poor Buzz in the wrong place at the wrong time. Funny thing is, all these men deciding what to do with me when I'm quite capable of taking care of myself. Hey, baby, if the shoe fits, you know. Don't you dare. Look at all the trouble you got yourself into when I'm not around. Oh, to say nothing of the trouble I get into when you are around. I warned you. I warned you, don't take responsibility for me on probation. But no, you went right ahead blithely, like you always do, leaping without looking. You're right, you know, I should watch that. I do seem to get into hot water. Boiling. Well, it looks like we're stuck with one another. I can't leave, can I? Your son Frank and Springfield's finest watching me like a hawk? Nope, you get caught. They put you in the slammer, 
and you'd be in a worse mess than you're in now. That's debatable. But it looks like we'll just have to make the best of things out of a very bad situation for at least 80 days. Well, you know, we'll just um, stay out of each other's hair. Um, not aggravate each other and take turns with Coop. Fine. And you can decide all the particulars the way you want them to be. You can tell me when I can eat and when I can sleep and when I can breathe. Fine. Time for Coop's bath. Is that all right with you, my lord? Sure. Oh, you are not going to like what I have to tell okay, you. Okay, I've got something that I want to show you before. Uh, no, 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 no. You are not going to talk yourself out of this one. No, 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 I don't think... Oh, my. I went home, checked my CDs, figured I'd beat you to the punch. I can't believe Marcus, you... What's the matter? You don't want to be seen with me like this or something? What? Oh, no, are you kidding? I mean, I love you, not your hair. Just... What did you just say? I said I love you. Life is good. <laughs> Save it, Jay. Save what? The holier than thou lecture. No, there's no holier than thou lecture. It's not my job. You can do what you want with your life. That's right. Answer me one question now. What? How come? How come why do Why'd you do this? Because of you. Because of me? Yeah. Well, more like something you said. What? When we first met, I was this straight-A student, right? I mean, all I cared about was making the grade. I thought I'd find all the answers I needed in some book. But you, you said, you always said that life was about a whole lot more than that. It's about experience. I said that. You're right, Jay. For me, modeling for this class was about that. For the first time in my life, I tried something out just for the experience of it. That's what you call taking off your clothes in front of a, a whole class full of total strangers? Yeah, the only reason I didn't go through with it is because... <sighs> because of what, Michelle? Because of you, okay? If you hadn't been in this class, I would have gone through with it. No, 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 that's a total load. You don't know. I know that you don't need the 30 bucks. I... I think you're trying to prove something. I, I have no idea what it is, though. How oh, and you pride yourself on being so clued in. Yes, I do. Oh, especially about women. But I'll tell you something, Jay Chamberlain. You don't have a clue about women. Person. Abby, please, just, just one second. Just give me one minute, okay? Just one minute. I know that you're upset with me. Why would I be upset with you? Because I knew about Blake's twins. Oh, well, you don't have to rub it in, Philip. Everybody knows I was the last Okay, know. I know you're angry. I just have I, something I want to tell you, all right? I went to see Ross at Thanksgiving. Did you know that? See Ross? Yes, I went Why? to see to tell him the truth. Why? Because of what happened to me when I was a kid. You, Rick told you about my screwed up family, how I grew up thinking that Alan was my father. He told me that Justin Marler is your real father. Right, and let me tell you, finding that out after 18 years was not pretty, so... What about now? 
I don't think you ever get over something like that. So that that that's the point. That's I wanted to try to save Kevin from going through what I went through. So I went to Rick, full of righteous indignation, and told him, "How dare you do this to a child? Knowing knowing what you do about my life." And I told him that I was going to go tell Ross. And I, and I also told him that I thought it was going to come out, you know, regardless, eventually. Well, what happened? So, I went over to Ross's, all fired up, had my speech all set. And when I got there, and I saw him with those two children, I couldn't do it. I knew that it was the right thing to do, but I couldn't do it. See... It's, I mean, things are not always as simple as right and wrong. You know, it's, it's not always that easy. Abby, I'm, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. I, just, I, just, I want you to know that I value your friendship. I really do. And I hope that you and Rick can find some way to put this thing back together. I thought you were my friend. I am your friend. I am. I think we have very different ideas Abby, about what that means. You have to. I'm Rick's friend, too. Please don't judge him so harshly. You know, I don't, I don't think that there are any bad guys in this. I really don't. I think it's just a bunch of normal human beings that are caught in an impossible situation trying to get through it the best they can. Wonderful to have them down. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ross, I'm um, um, gonna make some coffee. Do you want some? Oh, don't go to any trouble. No, it's no trouble. What I mean is, no, no, thank you. I have to get back to the office. I know today was hard. Oh, God, yes, it was. tell you something. It does not matter what Rick did. What do you mean? That doesn't have anything to do with the decisions I'm making now. Oh, For a second, I thought you were going to say is you're going to forgive him. Oh. For what, Philip? For fathering a child with a married woman or for lying to me about it for months? Either one would be okay. Both would be kind of nice. You know... Where I come from, people are not so careless with other people's feelings. They don't just say the words friendship and loyalty and honesty and love. They live by those Abby, words. Rick loves you so much. Don't say that. Don't. I, I wish you could understand. You know what? I do understand. I, I do. do. Do you remember the other night when we were talking at the country club? Do you remember that? Yes, when I was supposed to be celebrating my engagement. Right. Do you, do you remember you, you told me that the first time that you saw Rick, when he came flying in on the helicopter, remember you said you thought he was like some superhero? He's not, Abby. He's human. He makes mistakes, just like the rest of us. When I first came here to Springfield, I was not just hearing impaired. My eyes were closed, too. And I realized that that was a sin because God gave me perfect vision, 2020. I am a human being, too. And I am realizing that I didn't see these things because I didn't want to. And I have learned a lot since then. Didn't you say it was Rick that opened your eyes? I don't... I don't want to talk about Rick anymore. I have my own life to live now. Don't give up. I'm not giving up. No way. It may seem impossible right now, pal. But I am going to have Abby back in my life again. What do you want to tell me, Ross? What is it? I have set up a meeting for us uh, next Tuesday, 8 a.m. A meeting? Mm-hmm. We're going to sit down with our lawyers. Our lawyers? 
And we're going to work out the terms of our divorce. Hi, Frank. It's me. Um, I want you to do a little favor. I want you to run a background check on Jeffrey Morgan. Uh, yeah, I know. It's her husband. I'm trying to keep someone from making a big mistake. This has been Guiding Light.